Hi friends and welcome to our kids voting trivia. So with the election coming up in November, you're probably hearing a lot about who people are voting for and why they're voting for those people. But have you ever thought about what it took for Americans to get the right to vote? Voting history is actually really surprising. So we're gonna see how much you know tonight with some trivia. Okay, I'm gonna start with some multiple choice questions. Each of these questions is going to be worth 10 points and I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to write down your answer before I tell you what the answer is. Let's get started. Okay, question number one. What were the requirements to vote in the first presidential election when George Washington was elected? Was it A, male, you had to be a man, B, white, you had to be white, C, you had to be over 21, D, you had to own property, E, some of those things, or F, all of the above. All right, so that's 20 seconds. Do you have your answer down? The answer is F, all of those things. You had to be a white man over 21 and you had to own your own land to be able to vote in that election. How'd you do? Don't worry, we've got some more. Here's another 10 point question. Number two, about what percentage of Americans could vote in the first election? Do you think it was A, 100% did everyone get to vote in the first election? B, 50%, about half of people. C, 25%, or D, only 5%. What do you think? I'll give you 20 seconds. All right, got your answer? It was in fact D. Specifically, it was 6% of Americans got to vote in that very first election. That's not many. Okay, how are you doing? Let's get your next question. Here's another 10 point question. Number three, when did the last state remove the property requirement? When did they decide that it didn't matter if you own land to be able to vote? Is it A, 1796, B, 1800, C, 1856, or D, 1900. When do you think that was taken away? You have 20 seconds. Got an answer? It was C. In 1856, North Carolina was the last state to remove the property requirement. Okay, here's question four for 10 points. What was the name given to the laws used largely in the Southern states to prevent African Americans from voting? Was it A, the James Creek laws, B, the Jim Crow laws, C, the Dixie laws, or D, the poll laws. What do you think? Okay, the answer was B, Jim Crow laws. Now the name Jim Crow actually came from a minstrel show. The main character in that show was called Jim Crow. Okay, here's your last 10 point question. Number five, which was not a way Jim Crow laws suppress voting? Was it A, poll tax, B, literacy tests, C, the grandfather clause, or was it D, all of the above were used to suppress voting? What do you think?
The answer is D. Not only did you have to pay, potentially, a poll tax, so money to get to vote, or take a literacy test. Now, this wasn't just a test to see if you could read or not. These tests were designed to try to confuse and trick people and make sure they couldn't vote. But there was a clause called the grandfather clause. Now, what that said was that if your grandfather had voted, then you were allowed to vote. The trick was most African-American people, their grandparents were slaves, and so they hadn't voted. So the grandfather clause was used to make sure white people could vote, but black people couldn't. How did you do? Take a second to tally up your points. We had five questions. Each of them were 10 points. The most points you could have if you got all of them right was 50. How did you do? Are you ready to keep going? Okay, our next game, we're going to play three truths and a lie. So I'm gonna tell you four statements. Three of those are going to be true statements and one of them will not. So you have to try to figure out which one is not a true statement. Okay, is the lie that states in the North fully supported the 15th Amendment? This was the amendment that gave black men the right to vote. How about only 28 states were required to ratify the amendment for it to go into effect? This is specifically talking about the 15th Amendment. There are still voting restrictions for people living in the U.S. today. Do you think that's true or do you think that's a lie? How about indigenous Americans did not receive full status as citizens of the United States until after amendments were passed giving black Americans and women the right to vote. So do you think indigenous Americans received all of their rights at the same time as either black Americans or women? Or do you think it was after that? I'll give you 20 seconds to figure out which one you think the lie is. Do you have a guess? Did you think it was the last one? Well, that my friends is true. Indigenous Americans did not get the rights of citizenship and voting rights at the same time as black Americans or women. They got them after. In 1924, the Indian Citizenship Act was passed. It said that Native Americans or indigenous people could be given all the same rights and considered citizens just like the rest of those residing in the United States. However, their voting was still suppressed at a state level. How about the third one? Did you think that was the lie? Actually, there are still rules about who can vote and who can't vote in the United States even if you live here. So, you have to be a citizen there are residency laws for some states. You have to live in a state a certain amount of time before you're allowed to vote in that state. Some states have laws about who can vote based on their criminal record. If you're in prison, if you've committed a felony, there are restrictions on voting based on those. And other states have laws that require IDs to make sure um, those get checked before you are allowed to vote. Okay. Let's keep going. How about that second one? Do you think the 15th Amendment only needed 28 states to ratify it for it to go into effect? That's true. They didn't need all the states. They just needed 28 of them. So our lie was actually the first one, that states in the North fully supported the 15th Amendment. The 15th Amendment had difficulties getting ratified in states in the North and in the South. In Ohio, the 15th Amendment only passed the Senate, the state Senate, by one vote and only passed Ohio's House of Representatives by two votes. So it was something that they had to consider in the North and the South. Okay, great job. Did you get that right? If you did, give yourself 20 points. Okay, 
we're going to continue with our three truths and a lie. So, which one of these do you think was the lie and which ones are true? Do you think that the first black person elected to a public office was in Ohio? Do you think the first women were elected to a legislature before the 19th Amendment passed giving women the right to vote? Do you think that Tennessee didn't pass the 15th Amendment, which is the amendment that gave black men the right to vote at the state level until 1997? Or do you think that the Republican and Democratic parties have always been the two main political parties in the United States? I'm going to give you 20 seconds to try to pick out which one is the lie. Okay, do you have a guess? Let's see. The first one is true. John Mercer Langston was elected a clerk in Brownhelm Township of Ohio in 1855. The second one is also true. So in Colorado, there was a state law that allowed women to vote in that state. And so three women, Clara Cressingham, Carrie Holly, and Frances Clock, were elected to their state legislature. The third one, actually also true. So the 15th Amendment, if you'll remember from earlier, didn't need all of the states to ratify for it to go into effect. And so in 1997, Tennessee ratified this amendment. This was mainly a symbolic thing, just saying, yes, we do agree with it because the law at the national level was already in effect. The last one is the lie. The Republican and Democratic parties have not always been the two parties in the United States. Earlier, there was the Federalists, the Democratic Republicans, and the Whig parties, which were the main parties that controlled the presidency and the different houses in the United States. Okay, let's see if you can match. We've been talking about a lot of amendments that are very important when it comes to voting rights. Let's see if you know which amendment gave which group of people rights. So we have the 15th Amendment, which happened in 1870, the 19th Amendment, which happened in 1920, the 24th Amendment, which happened in 1964, and the 26th Amendment, which happened in 1971. Can you figure out which amendment gave which group of people the right to vote? I'll give you 40 seconds to try to match the amendments to the groups. Are you ready? This was a tricky one. Okay, let's see how you did. For each of these, each amendment you get right, give yourselves 10 points. Okay, let's start with the first one. The 15th Amendment eliminated racial barriers to voting. So you weren't supposed to use race as a way to tell someone they couldn't vote. So that gave black American men the right to vote. The 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. The 24th Amendment in 1964 is the one that eliminated poll taxes. So this is when the country started realizing that Jim Crow laws were keeping black Americans from voting, even though in the Constitution it said they had the right to vote. So they started taking steps to make sure that black American men and women actually could vote like they were supposed to. And the 26th Amendment lowered the voting age from 21 years old to 18 years old. So those Americans were given the right to vote there. How did you do? Did you get them right? 
Okay, let's keep going. We've got a couple of other questions for you. These questions don't have choices to pick between, so each one of them is going to be worth 30 points. Okay, here we go. What percentage of registered voters voted in the last presidential election in 2016? So out of all the people that were registered and could vote, what percentage of people actually did? Alright, do you have an answer? Let's see. It was approximately 58%. Did you get that? Were you too high or too low? So out of all the people that were registered to vote, only 58% of people actually voted. That's why it's very important to use your voting. Alright, you might know the answer to this one from an earlier question. Let's see how good your memory is. The 26th Amendment lowered the voting age to what? Did you remember? It was 18 years old. Earlier, it had been 21 years old as the youngest age you could vote at. Now, as long as you're 18 by election day, you can vote. How did you do with those two? Did you get those points? Okay. This is going to require you to make some lists. Each item you put down on your list, you can get five points for it. Here's your first list to make. What type of things can you vote for on a ballot? What kind of things are up for voting on in each election? How many did you get? Here are some examples of things you might have written down. You can vote for your elected officials, people like the president, of course, but also your mayor, your sheriff, your representatives, and your state justices. You can also vote on taxes and levies. You can vote if you want to continue funding or increase your funding for your schools or your libraries, for your parks, or for building new roads. How many things did you get? Did you get some points there? Okay, we've got one more list. Again, it's going to be the same kind of points. So let's see. Name some ways in which the participants of the civil rights movement fought and protested for their equality. What kind of things did they do during the civil rights movement? Do you have a list? Let's see, here are some examples of things that you might have written down. There were boycotts. One of the most famous ones was the Montgomery bus boycott in which people refused to ride the buses because they were segregated. There were sit-ins, so places like lunch counters that had whites only areas. White and black people would go and sit together at those counters and would refuse to leave. There were mass marches. There was civil disobedience. And so, for example, when Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat, that is an example of civil disobedience. And then there were other actions such as the Freedom Riders. So these people rode on buses uh, throughout the North and South to protest against the segregation 
and specifically the bus segregation. How did you do? Okay. Okay, moving on to our next game. I'm going to show you a list of some people uh, and they were the important first in the field connected to voting and elections. So I'm going to give you a minute and a half because it's a pretty long list to see if you can guess or know what they were the first to accomplish. All right, on this list we have George Washington, John F. Kennedy, William Henry Harrison, Kamala Harris, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Hillary Clinton, Ronald Reagan, Barack Obama, Geraldine Ann Ferrero, and Richard Nixon. Are you ready? Okay, here are the answers. And these were hard, so give yourselves 40 points for each one of these that you got correct. All right, George Washington, he was our first elected president. John F. Kennedy was our first Catholic elected president. William Her Henry Harrison, he was the first president to claim to be from Ohio. So technically, he was born in Virginia. The first president born in Ohio was Ulysses S. Grant. But Harrison w grew up in Ohio, and so he claimed it as his state. Kamala Harris is the first Black and South Asian woman to be nominated by a major political party. Franklin D. Roosevelt was the first president to serve more than two terms. George Washington set the president that precedent that presidents, tricky there, would only serve two terms in office. Hillary Clinton was the first woman nominated by one of the major political parties to run for president. Women have been nominated to run before, but never by the Democratic or Republican Party. Ronald Reagan was the first president to put a woman on the Supreme Court. She was Sandra Day O'Connor. Barack Obama was the first black president. Geraldine Ann Ferrero was the first woman nominated to be to run as vice president on a major political party. Um, she ran with Walter Mondale in 1984, and they lost to Ronald Reagan. And then Richard Nixon was the first president to resign from office. How did you do? That was a big one. Okay, we have one more game to play before we're done. I'm going to show you a page with pictures of three important figures in the fight for voting rights. And you can try to see if you know who they are, if you can write down their names. You're going to get 50 points for each correct picture you identify. I'll give you 45 seconds to identify all the people. So here we go with our first page.
Do you have some names? All right. The top picture is the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Our next picture here is Stacy Abrams. And then our bottom picture there is John Lewis. How'd you do? All right. We've got three more pages to go. Here are our next three fighters for voting rights. How did you do? At the top, we have Sojourner Truth. Over to this side, we have Malcolm X. And opposite him, we have Thur Thurgood Mar Marshall. Okay, here we go. We've just got two on this page. Let's see if you can identify them. All right, on this page, we have two prominent suffragettes. We have Ida B. Wells and Alice Paul. Here's our last page with two more. 50 points for each name you can identify. Okay, up top we have Susan B. Anthony. I'm sure you've heard that name even if you haven't seen her picture as much. And then below her we have Elizabeth Caddy Stanton. All right, we have one more question left before we finish up our trivia. And it's one of the most important questions we have. For 50 points, are the adults you live with registered for, to vote? And do they know where and how they will vote this election? It's very important that you make sure the adults you live with are registered to vote and vote in this election. You must register 30 days before the election at the latest. So that means by October 5th, you have to be registered for this upcoming election. We have information about getting registered to vote on our library's website, or you can give us a call and we can help you out. We also have a character debate coming up on October 1st at 6 o'clock p.m. So that's going to be something fun for the younger children, or you if you would like, to watch different characters such as Anna from Frozen, Mary Poppins, Shrek, and Snow White debate to see who should be in charge of the library. Thank you so much for participating this evening with us. We hope you had fun. Please note in the comments how many points you got. Have a great night. Bye.